Have you ever dreamed about becoming an emergency medical technician or a firefighter? Now is your chance. Serving a growing population of over a million people, Fairfax County's emergency personnel respond to over 90,000 emergency calls a year. If you are up to the challenge, this is your opportunity to fulfill your dream. The Fairfax County Volunteer Fire and Rescue Department is recruiting residents to become operational and administrative volunteers. It's really great to be able to help your community out, um, to be able to know that you've made a difference in many people's lives. Knowing that you not only have the, the knowledge of how to handle a bad situation, but you have the training on how to stay calm and how to keep cool when something uh, really unforeseen and, and, and bad happens. Knowledge that you learn from other people teaches you how to be a better person. So I mean, you can't go wrong by volunteering. All of Fairfax County's fire and rescue stations are staffed around the clock with career firefighters. To meet the growing need for more emergency personnel, operational volunteers of the Fairfax County Volunteer Fire and Rescue Department serve as a supplement to the career staff. To ensure that every resident has equal access to quality care, operational volunteers receive the same level of training as the career personnel. Career staff and operational volunteers work together for one common cause, to provide the highest quality services to protect the lives, property, and the environment of the community. Operational volunteers can serve as a licensed emergency medical technician, EMT, or as a firefighter. Uh, at EMT, you just learn all about the, the medical side. You know, how to splint somebody that might have a broken leg or arm. You know, how to treat somebody who's, you know, you know not breathing. At the EMT basic level, you know, we learn how to treat people in all sorts of environments. Uh, everything from, you know, childbirth, you know, shooting, stabbings. It's essentially it's the first line of medical training before you can move on to the advanced side. You don't have to have any medical background whatsoever. In order to become an EMT, they train you from start to finish, um, with including the CPR, which is the first thing you'll get before you even go into EMT school and there's a really good support system. I had other people at the station offer to help me with practicals outside of class. Anytime I needed to, to do my medical or trauma reviews, they were there. It's an excellent support system. In order for a volunteer to become a licensed EMT, they will need to attend EMT school. Classes are on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m and on Sundays from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. for three months. Once an individual receives their license, they may choose to keep their focus on emergency medical services, or they may broaden the scope of their training to incorporate firefighting skills. Through fire school, I mean, you learn everything that's on the national standards. You, know, you learn how to, how to pull a hose line off a fire engine, get water in it, advance it to, to put out a fire. You, know, you learn how to to throw ladders into a building, to climb, to rescue up, go through windows, you know, get victims out of the windows, bringing them down ladders. You learn how to search through a structure for victims. We teach people about hazardous materials, you know, what to do on hazardous materials incidents. You know, we teach people how to, to rescue people and rescue themselves. Fire school is very intense. It's very physically and, and mentally intense, but, and exhausting at times. It's a very strenuous experience. So if, if they feel that, uh, that you're struggling, then there's a lot of support available, even if it's you know, taking extra time to tutor you in the classes, to you know, help you set up more practical sessions. We, we look out for each other. If one person's struggling, then everyone really groups around that person and really builds them up in order to help them succeed at whatever task they might be performing. Firefighter school is on Tuesdays and Thursdays and on Saturdays and Sundays for five months. There are a number of people who volunteer for Fairfax County Fire and Rescue Department who have received their EMT and or their firefighter certification from another locality. If you're a Virginia certified EMT, that's a statewide certification and you'll come into Fairfax County as an EMT. The previous experience that you may have as a firefighter or EMT directly translate to your skills and abilities in the fire and rescue service here in Fairfax County. So any sort of past experience that you have will help you 
become a better firefighter or EMT here. Fairfax County being the diverse place that it is, uh, we require all sorts of additional training that is not a normal firefighter training. Stuff like metro rail operations, high rise operations, certain rope rescue techniques, all those things are something that Fairfax County does above and beyond the normal firefighter certification. And that's something that we need to teach people coming in if they already have a firefighter certificate. The environment of the firehouse is a very unique and can be challenging, but also probably the most fun environment that a person will ever find. A lot of times for the first couple hours of the morning, we train, driving around, looking in a building, you know, okay, second floor is on fire. How are we going to handle it? What are we going to do? Or we got a three car accident right here at this intersection. How many patients do we have? What are we going to do? So that's what your basic day and what the environment will be. You don't have to be an EMT or a firefighter to become a volunteer for the Fairfax County Fire and Rescue Department. You can contribute your time and talent to the administrative side of the department. Volunteer Fire Department cannot run on just fire trucks and ambulances. It has to have an administrative core to keep it operating. We can always incorporate your skills into the volunteer department. Um, management budgets, salesmen, carpentry, s secretarial skills. There's many, many things we can do as administrative members. It doesn't matter what your life experiences are, everyone has something to bring to the table. I do remember one experience we had. It was a, a routine call, if any call can be routine. Um, a lady had fallen from her bed and the caregiver said that she had dementia and really didn't speak much. And we got on scene, we did our assessment of her, and we were looking at the paperwork that she had. And we noticed that she spoke German. Well, I have a German background, and I was able to talk to her in German. And it was amazing the difference between what she was, you know, before we started talking to her in German. And she was very responsive. And on the way to the hospital, I think it, she just had a comforting level about it, just being able to communicate. That was a huge factor for her that she was in an environment she couldn't speak the language with. And so I think that was a comforting factor for her and our crew came back feeling very good. There was a call where there was flooding one night and power was out in some parts of the county. And I was helping the, the paramedics that night. And uh, a young couple went next door to check on their older neighbor to see if she was okay with the power out. What they found was that the neighbor um, had just started taking some pills because she was, she had some, uh, she was in a deep depression and didn't want to be here anymore. She had recently lost her mother and her uh, husband in a very short amount of time, and the rest of the family she had was not supportive. And uh, when you run a call with with people, there's no way that you will have life experiences like this person or be able to to really speak to what they're what every single person is going through. For me, I had. Uh, recently lost both of my parents, she could tell. As we, as we talked in the ambulance and as we talked at the hospital, as much as people had been there to help her, sometimes it takes someone who's been through a very similar situation to really get through to her. And the medic was also great in saying, here's where you could reach out for help. You are very deeply involved in somebody's life. Whether you are an operational or administrative volunteer, all volunteers are required to donate a minimum of 240 hours a year. However, there is no limit on how much you may participate. The volunteer service is designed to accommodate the commitments of their members as far as their careers, their normal jobs, and their, their family commitments and commitments outside of the fire department. Classes are designed to start later at night on the weekdays and we have more weekend classes so that people don't have to miss work and they're not put in a situation where there's a conflict between volunteering for the fire department and you know, your commitment to your normal job. The volunteers fire service is made up of people who are willing to lend that helping hand. That's why we join the, fire, the volunteer fire department and uh, that's why we continue to exist and, and be members in the volunteer fire department.